Fergus was the stranger that came to town and won the glittering prize. So he suddenly he's the man and all these other people, they wanted to be the man. They wanted to be Mr. Celtic. And fans are emotional, they're easy to manipulate when you're not winning. Fergus is behind the scenes all the time, which is the way he wants it, until he gets into control in March 94. Then suddenly his world changes. I think he'd un underestimated, you know, the sheer quantum of everything to do with Celtic. Mr McCann's been inundated with cards and letters from Celtic supporters sending good wishes to the new regime. The new boss is having to come to terms with celebrity status. Every move he makes is going to be questioned. The actual business plan gets you in the front door. It doesn't actually deal with the fundamental problems. We don't have a stadium, we don't have a team that's fit to compete. And we want fan ownership. So we want all these things. Fergus McCann came in. I always felt that as supporters, we were the lifeblood of the club. We should have the decision of what happens to the club. He had a plan. And that plan involved creating a 60,000-seater stadium, and he would offer shares to the fans. Celtic fans couldn't buy shares up to that point. Fergus went on to say that fans got involved and bought shares. It would help uh, rebuild Celtic Park. He had already spent his own personal wealth, and he was asking the supporters to do the rest of the heavy lifting. The stadium was a key element in the transformation of Celtic. For one supporter, the 10 a.m. deadline had come too soon. Thousands of others had beaten the clock to invest their minimum £620 in the future of Celtic. I personally bought shares. Most people I know bought shares. It was the most successful football share issue ever. And he said that that's when it dawned on me the responsibility that I'd taken on here. We have a commitment to our complete stadium redevelopment here. The first phase is about seven, uh, 17 million pounds. In order to build it, you had to knock stands down, so we had to rent Hamden for a year. That cost Celtic an arm and a leg. No rest for the Rangers after their 3-1 victory over Celtic, a crucial win which puts the Ibrox club top of the Premier Division. Rangers were heading to equal Celtic's record of nine in a row. There was always the thought that, say, uh, you know, not en enough money was spent on the team. The supporters were walking across Glasgow seeing David Murray saying that for every five of Fergus McCann spent, he would spend a tenner. And Fergus McCann was accused of being tight. We have to balance what we think is a good value. We don't just spend money for the sake of doing so. Welsh Rangers are winning all before them and a very tough business plan is having to be enforced in order to create the conditions for the longevity and stability. It's very difficult in the here and now, when all the fans are saying, give them the money. It's 18 months since Fergus McCann swept into Parkhead, completing the takeover which saved Celtic. 18 months in which he has built a breathtaking new stand. McCann remains bemused by the criticism which has been levelled at him since he took control. It's very difficult you know, for most fans, including myself, to work out the balance of how much money was raised and how much the stadium was costing and how much could be given to the team. We would all have wanted a lot more money spent on the team. Celtic chairman Fergus McCann walks out to booing and cat calls for an annual general meeting in which he and his general manager, Jock Brown, offered a stout defence of their running of Celtic. Mr McCann has got no ambition at all. We're sitting here and we haven't signed a player in over a year. Whereas Rangers were throwing money at players. It's a classic from Landrup. The kind of careful housekeeping that Fergus McCann put in place wasn't always popular. But it's Rangers who've won the championship for the ninth time in a row and the celebrations last a long time. Fergus McCann wasn't a natural media performer. He didn't necessarily feed the beast, if you like. You know, he's not giving the sound bites, he's not returning the calls, he's not doing interviews. What was Celtic's reaction 
There was no reaction. So, it's an easy target. We can. I say today. Listen, as a journalist, that's how the game works. We are human beings, we respond to people, we pick up the phone to us. The way that McCann was treated by the media was disgusting. And uh, the way that McCann was treated by some fans was disgusting. Some people ought to be ashamed of themselves. Celtic go into the last day, two points ahead of Rangers and need a win against St Johnson to make absolutely sure. But Rangers still hoping to pounce on a record 10th championship in a row. Larson lining up for the shot! What a start for Celtic! In for Harold Blackback! The long wait is over! Celtic have won the championship! That day was just something else. I mean, it's a memory that's etched in forever. It was just immense relief, I think. And the celebrations were amazing, but given all the politics that had gone on, I sort of knew something was likely to happen, and it did. Celtic's head coach, Vim Janssen, has resigned just two days after his team won the Scottish League Championship for the first time in a decade. It's understood he'd failed to agree with the club what money would be available for new signings. Vim Janssen gave a press conference where he was fairly coruscating about the Celtic board, about Fergus McCann. You flip forward to the, the flag unfurling, and then Fergus comes out, and you hear the booing. It's a great pleasure. Why would you boo a guy who'd done so much for the club? The man credited with saving Celtic, Fergus McCann, will leave and sell his 50-plus percent stake in the club. When he left, if you look back now, people were happy to see him go. And I think a lot of people would have to admit they actually got it pretty wrong. Fergus's big maxim always was, money doesn't guarantee success, but no money guarantees no success. History will judge if Fergus McCann transformed Celtic. A lot of people my age must look back and go, wow, I didn't really realise all the benefits that we would enjoy as a result of these hard times that took place whilst McCann was here. I don't think Celtic can thank Fergus McCann enough for what he did for the club at that time. I still think his legacy actually is underappreciated, under under recognised. Had there been no takeover in 1994, Celtic would have been out of business. The stadium itself is a magnificent stadium. It's it's our home. Jock Steen, Jimmy Johnston, Billy McNeil, Fergus McCann should be there with those immense figures in Celtic history. His legacy is uh, what we have today. It's the biggest club in Scotland, it's the biggest stadium in Scotland. He did everything he says we'd do. The world of football now is full of bullshitters, people that talk a good story, but when it comes to writing the check, they don't. He's the only person that I met, and I met dozens of people, he's the only person that I met in this whole time that had a plan that involved investing money and building a stadium so that Celtic could compete in the 21st century. Because he had all the answers to all the problems. Nobody else did.